UFC Fight Night Edmonton. Moreno versus Albazi takes place this weekend. And I'm going to go through the full card breakdown and in detail prediction, starting with the early prelim opener of Jack Shore versus Yusuf Salal. Weird one here, Jack Shore. You're not a featherweight. Um, it's, yeah, it's at featherweight, 145. And, um, yeah, Jack Shore, I think, is going to lose. Yusuf Salal, I think, it's just... Is just more talented between the two of them. I know that's crazy since Jack Short's from, uh, where, where is he from? I forgot, Wales, yeah, Wales, Jesus, I was thinking of Welsh, just, uh, I'm just shut off today, uh, I'm gonna go with Yusuf Salal, younger, taller, like, I just trust him here for some reason, I just, I don't know, I'm just trusting him here, I know people are probably gonna pick Jack Shore, maybe not though, but, He's the underdog. Yusuf Law is the favorite. Um, I think he wins. Beat John O'Warrens easily in the first round. Beat Billy Quintillo in the second round. Pretty easy, though, let's be honest, on short notice. He's been looking good. Been looking really good. So I'm going to go for Yusuf Law to keep up the streak here and tap out Jack Shore. Like I think Yusuf Law, good on the feet, good on the outside. Had some bad performances earlier in his career, but I think he's fi- finally found the rhythm. And the, moment, and the momentum. And Jack Shore recently. Yeah, he's been facing some real tough guys. I don't rate a win over Maquan Amir Khani. I just don't. I like a win over Aaron's. John O'Aaron's more than Maquan. Joanna Sabrito fight was... He was losing that fight, but he got his legs chewed up. I think Zalal can land kicks here as well in this fight. I think he's got slick hands as well. And I think overall, he's just going to maybe piece up Jack Shore. Jack Shore tries mixing in some grappling. Zalal gets him in like a weird transition, gets the back, and maybe gets a submission win. Ricky Simone beat him as well and dropped him in that fight. Where's Simone now? You know, Simone's losing to a bunch of guys now. Um, just lost that Vinicius Solivera guy. Where is he? I wonder where he is. But I'm going to go with um, I'm gonna go with uh, Yusuf Zalal to kick off the card. We move on up the card. Jamie Lynn Horth versus Ivana Ivana Petrovic. I'm not even going to check who the favorite is. I'm not even going to do that. I don't even know who the favorite is in this fight. Uh, she's coming off one of her... Because le- I don't want it to sway me. That's why. Um, I'm going to go with... Um, oh, she beat Nadia Liang, but Nadia Liang's terrible. Luana Carolina, she lost to. Jamie Lynn Horth, she, what did she, how, what has she done? Lost to Veronica Hardy nearly a year ago, 11 months ago. She beat Haley Cohen, like, really scraping at the bottom of the, really scraping at the bottom of the barrel here in terms of these wins. Um, I have no clue who wins this. Um, I rate a loss to Veronica Hardy a little bit more than a Carolina loss, but it was in her debut. Because that is a tough debut in Carolina, who is awkward and rangy and just weird to fight. So, I, who am I going to pick? I'm going to go Jay. No, I'm going to go, yeah, Jamie Lynn Horth, I'm going to pick here. Because Ivana Petrovic, she's not good. Like, in that fight, I remember in that Carolina fight, she did look terrible. Like, really, like, she's looked terrible. Like, like, anyone, any female fighter could win that. It's where Jamie Lynn Horth, yeah, I did lose to Veronica Hardy. But still, she at least made it to a split decision. Did all right in that fight, I guess. Won her debut. It's in Canada. I'm sure she'll get that more motivation edge than Ivana Petrovic, who's from fucking Norway. So I'm going to go with Jamie Lynn Horth. She's a favorite. I think she wins. We move on up the card. Um, Chad and Helliger versus Cody Gibson. Dude, Cody Gibson fights a lot. Holy shit. He actually does fight. When did this guy... This guy's fought a bunch this year. Yeah. Miles Johns lost and then beat Brian Kelleher. Now he's fighting Chad and Helliger. 
I've just never rated Chad and Helliger, Chad and Helliger, and I'm right for that. I've never been on the hype train of Chad and Helliger. Just never thought he was really got, that good, and I've been I've been right. Like, you know, he loses to guys like we beat Sheryl Lampos Gregorio, but that guy's shit. And then you know he beat he loses to Jose Johnson. Was winning that fight, I think, though, or at least one one going to that fight, and they got caught in like a submission win. Or submission loss. And then he lost to Healy Alatang. That wasn't a good performance either. But oh, you guys, he, oh, guys, he beat Muin Gafarov and Jesse Strader. Those are his best two solid, awesome wins. Da-na-na, Chad and Helliger beat Jesse Strader and Muin Gafarov. Yeah, I'm not picking him here. Um, I'm going to go Cody Gibson probably. No? Like, I know he's probably going to be the. He's the favorite. Fuck. Cody Gibson, I just think's all right though. Like I don't mind a loss to Miles Johns. I don't at all. And then Brad Katona. Brad Katona arguably beat that fucking guy last, like not two weeks ago, on um, the Anthony Hernandez card. I forgot his name, but he beat he arguably beat that Brazilian undefeated guy. I forgot his name. It was just what's his name? I forgot his name. You know who I'm talking about, though. He be arguably beat that 15-0 undefeated prospect. Gene Matsumoto. There it is. That's his name. Gene Matsumoto. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind that. Two close fights of Johns and Katona. Beat Kelleher. I'm going to pick him here. I'm going to pick him to get this one done. Over. Chad and Helliger. Just jiu-jitsu difference here. Range difference probably on the feet. Both 37. He's way taller. Got holy shit! He's got a seven-inch reach here, compared to him. I'm picking Cody Gibson. We move on, up the card, um, to another fight, which is Surrey City versus Garrett Armfield. I'm man, Garrett Armfield. I fell for him a bit, not not that way, but like. I fell for the hype a bit for Garrett Armfield. I'm not even going to lie. I'll straight up just say, I fell for the hype of him. Um, and I did. Um, he looked terrible. Because he beat Garrett Armfield. I thought at one point, oh shit, this guy's actually on a roll. But then he lost to Brady Heist. I'm like, fuck. And an Apex card, obviously, as well. Fuck, he lost to Brady High Stand. And then, you know, he beat Katona. That was the good win. I was like, oh, shit. He beat Katona as a massive underdog in Canada. Beat Tashiobi Kazama. Lost to David Onama. His jiu-jitsu just isn't there. But he is fighting Surhi City. That's the thing. He is fighting Surhi City. Who is not really a jiu-jitsu type. And really a guy that will capitalize for submissions. I'm sure if it's there, he might. But, like... You know, when's asking me about submission? You got triangle choke in 2021. But, you know, you see, like, he doesn't really go for submissions himself. It will be, like, a, him capitalizing on a sub, you know? But he did lose to Ramon Taveras. Which, he arguably... The thing is, in that fight, he kept getting dropped. Round one, he got dropped. Round two, he got dropped. But he was out striking and being and accumulating... Huge shots on Ramon Tavares. That was a great fight. You should rewatch that fight if you haven't. That was an amazing matchup. And then round three, he was beating the shit out of Tavares. I scored at Tavares because of a knockdown. I count that more than just... I count that a lot. That, t- that takes a round. And I don't think City did enough. That was a very close fight. And in the first fight, he got KO. Garrett Armfield's pretty good with the hands. He is good with the hands. And he's not funny a guy who'll try to take him down like hey, like high stand. So you know what? I'm actually going to take Garrett Armfield here. Um, I think he's crispy with the hands. He's got power. He's beating guys like Katona before. Who I think could beat City in a fight. He doesn't have to worry about any grappling here. City will be trying to like break him. I don't know if he breaks Armfield. So I'm actually going to take Armfield by KO in the first round. In a scrap. Might be a bad prediction. Might age badly. But I have a good read on this. No grappling threat here. 
Maybe he breaks in terms of cardio. On field doesn't break though, unless you there's someone taking him down like a no- Onam or a high stand. He has his own way, so I'm gonna pick him to win this. We move on. Up the card. Alexander Romanov versus Rodrigo Nascimento. I'm gonna go with Hmm. I don't mind a lot to Derek Lewis. I don't. Some guys can beat him, some guys can't. He's got good grappling though. But he couldn't take down Lewis. That's the problem I'm having with this. So on the feet, am I gonna trust Nascimento to land big huge shots? I don't know. The beat the way I don't know, this is a weird one, because Romanov doesn't have they're both grapplers going up against each other. But I think that will cancel out, to be honest with you. I personally see that canceling out. I can see it being a striking battle. But Romanov got out grappled by Jelton Almeida. But that's Almeida. He would do the exact same thing to Nascimento. He beat Ivanov. Lost to Volkov. Lost to Tybura. Beat Chase Sherman. So I can see this honestly being a scrap. When they both fail their own takedowns. I can see them just scrapping it out. And if it comes down to the stand-up here, am I going to trust Romanov or Nascimento? Romanov's not the guy to scrap on the feet, and he can't scrap. All right? He's just in a... He's just so... something. He's just huge. Um, let's just put it that way. Same with Nascimento, but I can see more of a definition in terms of abs in, the, in Nascimento. Beat Bozer and Latifi, but he's been KO'd before on the feet. Romanov hasn't, but I don't know. Oh, fuck it, they're both so bad. Um, I'm gonna lean Nascimento because I think he just is faster. If someone can go to light heavyweight easier, it will be him. That's a good thing to say here. If someone was were to go to light heavyweight, it'd be him. Romanov, I can see him just being fat and just and just slow. And I can see him, I can see Nascimento just landing a big shot and that's it. Down goes Romanov. I'm going to take Nascimento. 50-50. Good take down defense on both ends. If anyone, I think we've seen more. I think, and plus, I think if we've seen more weaknesses in the grappling department, it is for Romanov. So I'm going to take it. Only thing we've seen, a weakness of Nascimento was... His chin. And I don't see Romanov chinning him, so we'll see. We move on. Up the card. Um, Charles Jordan. Charles Jordan versus Victor Henry. Tricky one for Jordan. I mean, if I'm remembering, Victor Henry's last fight was against Ronnie Yaya. Good performance there. Um, where the fuck is Javid Bashra? I've always been wondering this now. We're supposed to fight Chris Gutierrez. Yeah, the guy just hasn't fought. Jeez, uh, I'm going to pick him to win this. I'm going to pick, um, well, no, who am I going to pick? Um, well, I'm going to break it down first. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, you beat Ronnie Yaya pretty easily. Uh, yeah, you broke Yaya easily in that fight. Um, beat Gravely, good win. Was looking good against Javid, but Charles Jordan... Sean Woodson fight was a decent performance in hindsight, but is it? Alex Caceres arguably should have won. But that wasn't a good performance from Jordan. He lost every single round, arguably. But they gave him a split decision. You know? Because it, it was in Canada. Ricardo Ramos isn't a good win. It just isn't. Cron Gracie isn't a good win. Lando Venata, Andre Yule, these are his wins. But when he steps up against guys like Nathaniel Wood... It's over. Guys against Sean Woodson, it's over. Gene Silva, it's over. Gets knocked out in that fight. Badly. Really bad KO. Victor Henry's not the guy to, to, to really KO you. He's a guy that will scrap with you. That's the thing with Victor Henry. And he kind of got scolded and exposed a bit by a Sun Sal. He is technical, though. Jordan is good. So you know what? I might take Charles Jordan, to be honest with you. Because I feel like this is the fight where he won't get KO'd. 
Won't get out grappled, because Henry's not really much of a grappler. Can grapple, but he's not really much of, like, a heavy wrestler. And, um... I think this is one where Jordan can just bully him a bit. And just pick his own ways and make it his fight. Like, if it's a scrap, Jordan will have the power advantage. Maybe get a knockdown on Henry. The guillotine's there if Henry shoots for a takedown. I actually have really good reads in this video, on this full card prediction. I'm actually going to go for Charles Jordan. I think he gets this one done. Victor Henry could skull him at range. But it's not sh this is different between Victor Henry and Sean Woodson at range. And other than that, Wood out grappled him. Wood's good. Should have arguably beaten Shane Burgos. I'm going to pick him to win this. I'm going to pick him to win this fight. Got caught by Julian Arosa in a Dars. But still. I, I don't think Henry's that. I think Henry just wants it to be his own way. And I'm not going to rate a win over Hani Barcelos at this point. We move on. I'm actually going to go Charles Jordan. Hopefully I had a good read there. We move on at the card. Holy shit, this is a long card. We'll speed it up, though. Ariane Lipsky versus Jasmine Judavicious. Um, I'm going to pick... Well, hmm. I'm probably going to pick Jasmine Judavicious here. I like her in this fight. I like Jasmine Judavicious uh, in this fight. Now... I actually think Ariane Lipsky's always had pretty mid-takedown defense. Now, she does have power in, on the feet. She does have power, but I think Jujuda Vicious won't get dropped here. And I think Jujuda Vicious, although she looked shit against Cortez and got actually kind of just masterclass for three rounds, she beat Ke Pris Priscilla Kekawera. Beat her. It's just her stand-up's not good, Jujuda Vicious. But I think she's got the grappling edge enough. She beat Fatima Klein. Easy win. Fatima Klein, easy win in that fight. Then, um, yeah, she was supposed to fight Arawaho. Now she's fighting Lipsky. She beat Maverick easily. Like, that's a good win. Whooped Maverick easily. And, um, I overall think she can get this one done. I think she can get this one done. It's just her stand-up that's not good. She needs to work on that a lot, but... Lipsky, I don't think she has the skill in the feet enough. She's got power that can like tire you out in a fight. And I think that can. I think Jujuda Vicious can grapple with her and get the job done. So I'm gonna go like sec a second round, first round submission win for Jasmine Jujuda Vicious. We move on up the card to another fight. <laughs> Eamon Zahabi versus Pedro Munoz on the prelims. Jeez, Pedro loses one fight. David, heaven forbid, he's on the prelims of a fight night. I know he lost more fights before, but lost convincingly to Phillips. He's on a prelims of a fight night. I kind of have to go Eamon Zahabi at this point, no? I have to kind of go Eamon Zahabi at this point, right? I kind of have to go Eamon Zahabi at this point. I think he's been looking good lately, Zahabi. Now... Does he put away Pedro Munoz? I don't think he does, but I think Zahabi's good at range. He picks his shots. He beat Javid Basharat. Fucking solid win. And he's been on a streak in the terror recently. And he's staying reasonably active. I know he fought in March, but I think he's taking time to improve. Probably just waiting out for a Canada event. Now he's back here against Pedro Munoz. He KO'd Ari Wikileng. Beat Ricky Tercios. Knocked out Draco Rodriguez, the great Draco Lini, obviously. But he beat Munoz. I think he'll beat Munoz. Pedro Munoz got embarrassed by Kyler Phillips. And Phillips just looks shit against Font. Maybe the hobby looks good against Munoz. And then he loses to fucking Mario Batista. Like, that'll work like that. But I'm going to go with uh, Zahabi. I think he's going to get this one done. I think he's been looking great lately. And I don't think Munoz just has that danger to him anymore. I don't think he has a danger to him anymore. I don't think he has that, that big, uh, like, I just, like, that sounded, out. that really was a weird sound. He doesn't have that big, <clears throat> the big power slugging back and forth. Like, at this point, why are you getting schooled by Marlon Vera? I know it was a bad stylistic fight from him. I actually picked Munoz to get it done, but 
terrible. Then loses to Phillips. Gets scored badly there. Phillips looks like he's the big next big thing. Loses to Rob fucking Font. And then that's it. So I'm not going to pick him. I'm not picking him to win this. Um, I have to go for... I have to pick Eamon Zahabi, who's been looking great. I know Munoz gave issues to O'Malley, but still. I don't care if he beat Chris Gutierrez. I couldn't give a fuck. Chris Gutierrez, it's a good win, but he won on knockdowns. I don't see him dropping Zahabi in this fight. I don't think Munoz has that big power anymore. He doesn't have that guillotine anymore. Because if he had that guillotine... He would have submitted Cruz, who was shooting takedowns non-stop in that fight. I just don't think he has it. I know he's been dropping guys and he does have that power. Zahabi, I think, can just school him. If Phillips can't get dropped, Zahabi won't get either. Won't get dropped either. We move on up the card. Um, do another fight. Mike Malott versus Trevin J. I think Mike Malott is good. I think people really... I don't know what happened at the, at the end of that Magni fight. Something must have happened, but I don't think it's, it's been disclosed. But he was dominating Neil Magni. If you rewatch it, he was dominating Neil Magni. But I don't know what happened. I think he just passed out or something, like from the pressure or something. Like, I don't know what happened. He just gave in and quit. Sucks, because, like... He was literally about to be ranked. Ten seconds left. And that's it. Now he's fighting Trevin Giles. Now, Trevin Giles, he is good, you know. But he hasn't been looking. Like, Carl's Prata slept him. Was you not right in that fight? And this is the thing. This is the thing about Trevin Giles. Bonfim beat him. Beat Parsons and Koske, though. That's his two good wins. Uh, Parsons and Koske. He obviously beat, he did beat Roman Delizzi as well. But lost to Duplessis. Lost to Morales. It does take talent to beat him. Other than if you're bomb for him, I guess. But he did lose to a grappling match to Malat before. So I think Malat will have confidence knowing, okay, I can get this guy down. Get this guy in a bad position on the ground. Malat's got good BJJ. He's beaten good guys before. Cans. Absolute cans. I get it, but... He's got a good stand-up. He can KO Giles on the feet. Giles can KO him as well because Malat is a bit slow on the feet. But I think Malat's good. I think he can get this one done. If you're picking Giles, you're just... You're dumb. Straight up. But still, I'm just going to go for Malat. <clears throat> Better on the feet. Better on the ground. I think he can get this one done, personally. Giles is KOable. I think he can get this. Guillotine. You know, Malat's got a good guillotine. Bomb him, caught him, caught him in that. So I'm going to go like first round guillotine win for Malat. We move on. Hot the card. Marc-Andre Berriot versus Dustin Stoltzfus. Oh, this is an easy win for fucking Berriot. Good for him. Um, I got him winning this probably. Um, yeah, I don't see anything impressive of Stoltzfus. Like, I get you can scrap. Berriot can as well. But... Actually, you know what? I'm going to go Barry out Because I think he's just been fighting better competition. And it's not like he's been getting smoked completely out the fucking water. Like, he's been fighting guys like Chris Curtis. Close fight. I leaned Curtis's way. But, like, I think Curtis sleeps Stoltzfus in, a, like, a round or two. They're like, you know? This is the thing here. Um, Barry out though. Oh, Pfeiffer did KO him. Oh, shit, I forgot that happened. Pfeiffer slept him in a round. But that's Joe Pfeiffer. The Austin Stoltzfus isn't going to KO him. He beat Aranders. He beat Marquez. I don't mind his losses, though. Chris Carter split decision. Joe Pfeiffer, knockout loss. Hernandez beat him. Cheating to Kwani, that's a bad look. That's a bad look, losing to Chidi. But Mark Andres area out sometimes, some nights... Can look really good in some fights. I think he can go out there and beat Stoltzfus. Break up Stoltz. I think round one might be competitive back and forth. Round two, competitive again. And I think round three, Stoltzfus will be gassed. Barrio is ready. Like, I think he'll be in there in his face. And I think Barrio is better in a scrap fight. We saw Stoltzfus lose to Bruno Fajaya in a scrap fight, getting KO'd with a spinning back elbow. 
So we'll see. We move on. I got Mark Andre Barrio, third round TKO. Kyle Machado versus Brenton Ribeiro. Why is this on the main card? But Munoz Sahabi is on the prelims. Yeah, hurry up, man. Fuck, this is a long card. I'm going to go with... um. I don't even know. Um, I don't even know. Who cares? Um, I'm going to go Brenton Ribeiro. Because I think he's been looking good against better opponents as of lately. Alright? Like, I think he's better. Like, I know he was at 205. Now he's coming up to heavyweight here. Oh, no, this is at light heavyweight. So my shadow's coming down. Okay, my shadow's coming down. I don't like that here, though. But Kyle Machado, the thing with him is, I've been not, I haven't been looking impressed. Like, I haven't been impressed by him. It's where Babiro, in his last fight, I was like, ooh. I actually picked him to beat that Magomed guy in his last fight as well. But Machado, just no real talent, no real skill. And I just, you know, it's for, against uh, for Ribeiro. Lost to Zhang, got caught, whatever. Was looking good beforehand, though. Um, I don't see Machado KOing him. But in the grappling... Oh, he did get out grappled, though, by Magomed here and there. Gadzi, whatever his name is. Gadzi Yuslov. You know? And he arguably maybe could have won, but he didn't. It was close, though. I had it 2-1 Magomed. He was just getting held down a lot in that fight, though. Machado did held down moments... Did hold down McPark at moments, but he didn't really, though. Lost to May straight up. Lost to Parkin by getting out grapple here and there, but arguably could have won on damage, but he didn't do enough. So, I'm going to trust Brenton Ribeiro to be more skilled on the feet at light heavyweight. He is the natural light heavyweight here. Machado's coming down. I can see him just picking apart Machado and staying safe and winning a 29-28 decision. We move on. Up the card. Derek Lewis versus Janata Deniz. <sighs> it's annoying, man. Because I can just see Lewis just sniping him. And that's it. Logic all fucking... What I could, you know... You know, Gilbert Burns, a former lightweight, brought Chimaev to a 29-28 war. And Whitaker just goes down and around. It doesn't make any sense. Jonathan Nunez should win this fight. He's a former glory kickboxer. He should be able to just piece up Derek Lewis and finish him. I'm going to pick it. Because, like, there's no reason to pick Lewis other than saying, oh, he catches him here. Jonathan Nunez has shown great stand-up ability. And he breaks, guys. And there's no secret now to just being scared to throw against Lewis. You know, he beat Carl Williams. Got a decision win in that fight. Not a great performance, but still, Carl Williams is tricky because he is a decent wrestler. Beat him, though. Beat Austin Lane by KO. Something that Rebellious Despain couldn't do. And he's been a former Glory kickboxer. He's been in Glory. He's fought in Glory. Fought Rico Verhoeven, took him to a decision win, or decision loss, sorry. Obviously, he did lose that fight, but in 2013, 2013, where he was 24 years old. Now he's 33. I'm picking him over Derek Lewis, because we've seen guys like Cyril Garn. I know we might, but this guy not be at the level yet, but I didn't see Garn at Glory, at glory Kickboxing. We've actually seen this guy at Glory. Fought good guys. Fought good names. I'm going to pick him. I'm going to pick him to get this done. Lewis coming off a good win. I just don't think that he will win this. Don't think he'll grapple either. And I'm going to pick Janata just sniping him. Or just scolding him for three rounds straight. Lewis would have beaten Romanov, I think. But this is just... This is too much. I think Janata either KOs him early with a big shot. Or just stay up the trip, schools Derek Lewis, and Lewis can't do shit. So, yeah, we move on up the card. Rose Namajunas versus Aaron Blanchfield. I'm going to go with Rose Namajunas actually getting this one done. Aaron Blanchfield's shit. Sorry, I just don't think Aaron Blanchfield's good at all. And I, I think people picking her here is just 
Like, no, she's not a 10 out of 10. Like, let's be honest. Um, so I don't think she wins. That's probably why people are picking her here. And, um, I don't think she wins this. Um, I don't think her grappling's good enough to beat Rose Nami Yunus. Obviously, she does have good takedowns in that. But Rose, it's a three-rounder, which I think does benefit Rose. Because in five rounds, I've seen in her fight against Cortez, she just kind of gives up a bit late. Kind of just throws the fifth round away a bit to Tracy Cortez. But we've seen her struggle. Like, we've seen her with grapplers in the past. And she's looked good and handled them pretty easily. So, I think that she can beat Aaron Blatchfield, who cannot fucking back it up on the feet at all. So, I mean, I know she beat Escondraj on the feet, but I mean, just beat Andraj as well. Skull there comfortably. So, yeah, I'm going to go with, um... I'm going to go Rhodes, sculling her here. Maybe round three, she gives it up a bit. That's it. Blanchfield wins that round. But first two rounds, I can see, like, Naminus maybe dropping Aaron Blanchfield. Dropping her into her knee. I think Rose can get this one done. I think Blanchfield got schooled by Fiora. Didn't win a single round of that fight. Embarrassing, embarrassing performance by Aaron Blanchfield. I don't think she wins this. Um, I'm going to go Rose. Again, it's a good, a good victory here. Oh, it is five rounds. Shit. It's five rounds. I'm still going to go Rose. Because, like, I think Blanche will make it closer, though. Now that it's, I knew, now it's five rounds. But Ramirez has been here. She's been in championship moments. Blanchfield hasn't. She's has she has way more experience. I think she I think she can get this one done over Blanchfield. 49-46, 48-47. Decision win. I'll go Rose. I lead her way here. We move on at the card. Brandon Moreno versus Amir Albazi in the main event. I should pick Moreno. I realistically should. But something's been telling me pick Albazi. Because these wrestlers are beating me. I hate to say it, but wrestlers are taking over a little bit over these strikers. Something's been telling me to pick fucking. At high level MMA. At high level MMA. People, this has been telling me. And something's been telling me Albazi's going to ragdoll Moreno. Or not even just ragdoll him. Hold him against the fence and knee him in the thigh for five rounds. He can do that, Albazi. But this is five rounds against Brandon Moreno. Albazi is going to be no one coming into it. I'm going to be fighting in, fi- in a five-rounder main event, crowded arena against Brandon Moreno. Probably will be getting booed. But will the pressure hit to him? He hasn't fought since June of 2023. We're supposed to fight in February. Got injured with a neck injury. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. And Moreno can go for some... Like, I don't like that he had a neck injury. Moreno can target, like, guillotines and that in this fight. No, he hasn't. I know there's no proof of it, but still. Moreno did lose to Roy Val, but Roy Val's good. He is not good. He, he's all right, Roy Val. He's better than I thought. And um, he's been beating Tyra in that as well. It's not bad to lose to Roy Val. You know? Moreno just didn't look great in that fight, though. I didn't see that dog in Moreno in that fight. Against Pantoja, he showed it, but slightly lost Pantoja as well, who did grapple and did well. But other rounds, Moreno did good. So, will Albazi be the guy to just ragdoll Moreno and destroy him? He can. But... Thing is with Albazi here, like, I think Moreno just doesn't have the power to get respect. That's the, pa- that's the problem here with Moreno. Because I can see Albazi just swing on the feet with him as well in this fight. So, you know what? I'm actually going to lean Amir Albazi. Getting this one done. 48-47. Decision win, unfortunately. I like Brandon Moreno. Hopefully, he loses, honestly. I hope he does lose because we need something at flyaway. I don't care if it's Albazi. I don't care. We need something. Tyra just failed. Albazi, please win. Ursa failed against Cara France. 
So I'm actually rooting for Albazi. I think he does win. I know he arguably lost to Kara France, and he did should have. He should have lost to Kara France, but he's been out for a year now. Oh, for fuck's sake! Yeah, I'm gonna go Albazi. Grapplers have beating has been beating these strikers recently. So if Moreno wins. I don't fucking know anymore in terms of predictions. So, yeah, I'm gonna go for uh, Amir Albazi getting the job done. 48-47. I think he'll get enough rounds where he gets to grappling off. Yeah, I think he's too strong, too physical. Big guy for flyweight as well. Um, and against Carafrance, he had a fear getting KO'd. Carafrance has the power to put you away. He didn't get put away like Urseg in the first round. I respect that in a way. So, I should have lost that fight. Clear. But I think he will surpass Brandon Moreno here. So, we'll see. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I'm going to take a meal, Bazi. Take it the win. Peace.